Morning everybody. Now this is the TP4056 single lithium cell charger board which I have looked at before and this is a new version of it. This has got the TP4056 chip the same as the old board but they've changed the USB connector from a mini to a micro which you can see takes up a fair bit less board space. And there are two additional components on this board on the right hand side and they are a DW01A battery protection IC and an 8205A dual MOSFET. So here's the data sheet for the DW01X and this is by Fortune Semiconductor Corporation and if I have a look through this We've got uh, a table of voltages where certain things happen, like uh, overcharge detection and the overcharge release voltage, over discharge uh, detection voltage, which is 2.4 on most of them, and the over discharge release, so it uh, connects back up when it when the battery rises up to three volts. There, uh, pinouts, and here is the internal circuit, and there is an application circuit. Now if you notice at the bottom there are a couple of MOSFETs which are external to the IC so that's what the 8205A is. So here's part of the 8205A datasheet and you can see that it's a dual n-channel MOSFET with the drains connected together. Um, the sources come out on pairs of pins so you've got a pair of pins for each of the sources and a pair of pins effectively for the common drain connection uh, to provide additional current handling capability. It's a TSSOP8 package and uh, one of the features is that the gate voltage um, is particularly low. So there if you look in general features RDS on of uh, less than 40 milliohms with a gate voltage of just 2.5 volts and uh, less than 25 milliohms when the gate voltage is 4.5 volts. So how's all this connected up? Well you can probably see that the battery connects to B plus and B minus. B plus is linked to out plus but B minus and out minus are running through that MOSFET. So there's the switch. It's in the low side of the circuit and then the battery protection IC, the DW01A, controls this MOSFET and switches the battery connections on and off. So here you can see I've connected up my battery to the battery connections and a little 6 volt light bulb which is glowing, although very dim, to the out plus and minus connections and I'm monitoring the battery voltage on my meter here and that's currently reading 2.9 volts. So when that battery voltage drops to about 2.4 volts, the protection IC should kick in and the MOSFET should switch off. So 2.5 volts and the lamp has gone off. And now of course with the battery being disconnected, the voltage will start to recover. So that's climbing slowly back up. 2.82, 2.83. So that's now 2.90. Let's have a look at the bulb. That was coming back on when the battery voltage had recovered to about 2.91, which it now is. That should switch back on, and there it goes. So what's happening here is it's just cycling round. Uh, the voltage of the battery falls, 2.5. The bulb goes off. The voltage of the battery recovers and climbs back up. And the bulb turns back on. And this will just continue indefinitely until the battery is so weak that the voltage can't recover sufficiently to trigger the battery protection IC to switch the MOSFET back on again. So now I've connected uh, USB 5 volts and you can see that the lamp is on but that's because it's being powered from 5 volt USB. The voltage on the battery 
is 2.84 volts. So it hasn't actually recovered enough yet um, to reconnect the battery protection IC. If it had, then the voltage on the battery would be shooting up because it would be under a charge condition from the USB 5 volts uh, at about 1 amp because that's the um, current set on the TP4056 with the pin 2 resistor there which you may just be able to see as a 1K2. So I'm really waiting now for the battery voltage to recover to about 2.91 or 2.92 volts and then suddenly the charging process should begin. And in fact it says here in the data sheet under auto power down recovery the IC continues to operate even after the over discharge state has been entered. The battery voltage rising to the over discharge release voltage which was about 3 volts or in the case of this chip it was about 2.92 or higher is the only required condition for the IC to return to the normal state. So the battery voltage has recovered to 2.91 so it should be close to the point where the battery protection IC reconnects it into the circuit and as soon as it does of course then it's going to receive the full uh, 1 amp charge current from the TP4056 at which point its voltage should uh, start to shoot up and that should happen any moment now and there it goes and it's shot up to 3.5, 3.6 now this is one of these fake ultrafires, so the voltage will climb very quickly um, up towards the 4.2 volt maximum of the TP4056 and then of course the TP4056 would switch from constant current, 1 amp, to constant voltage, 4.2 volts and allow the current to start to drift down. Now I've still got the bulb in circuit here and I was wondering whether that might affect the charging process. So I'm going to do a little test um, on the older board. So here's the original TP4056 board. And the reason I'm using this is because it's just got these connection points conveniently soldered onto it. And I've got in there my Sony uh, 18650 cell. And the blue light is on, which means that it's fully charged. And if we look at the scope, you can see that in terms of red, which is voltage, the voltage is sitting at 4 volts. So the red trace um, up here is 4 divisions above the zero point down here. The current, um, because I just did a test on this, did shoot up, then drop down, and now it's dropped to zero, which means fully charged. It, the cell is not taking any current at all now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a resistor across the battery to just pull a bit of charge out of it. It's quite a low value resistor, 2 ohms. And uh, we'll have a look at the uh, waveform. It'll be the same as that one on there, but I just want to go through it. So here's a big 10 watt 2 ohm resistor. I'm going to wedge it under those connections and just hold it there for a minute. In fact, I'm just going to put my finger on it. I just want to um, see how warm it gets. Okay, so what's happened now is that the current has shot up to, well that's about just under five divisions, so it's shot up to just under one amp. The voltage of the cell has dropped down slightly to about 3.6, 3.65 volts. Right, that's starting to get hot under my finger now, so let's remove that and watch what happens. Okay, so the battery voltage has risen up to just over 4 volts and the current has dropped back. Now because the cell requires a little bit of charging now, because I've pulled some charge out of it, the current is gradually dropping down. That's what the cell is pulling out of the TP4056. And then when the current drops to approximately a tenth of the nominal charge current, so approximately 100 milliamps, then the uh, TP4056 will terminate the charge. So that battery is still charging. 
The TP4056 board still has the red light on, but the current is dropping away now. It shouldn't be long before that uh, charger decides that that's enough charge and it switches the red light to a blue light. See if I can catch that moment on camera. And there it is. Blue lights come on and the charge current drops to zero or near zero. That's the yellow curve. The red curve will now show the battery voltage will drop away slightly because um, whereas it was undercharged before, it's now not being charged, so it'll just naturally diminish a little bit. Okay, so it seems that while in circuit, you can put a heavy load on the battery and the TP4056 will recharge the battery. And as long as there's no load on it, when it tries to terminate the charge, it does do it successfully. But I am wondering actually, if you had this setup where you had a load on the charger board that was drawing just slightly more than 100 milliamps, then the charger board would never see that current draw drop down to 100 milliamps or below 100 milliamps. So you might be able to fool the charger board into not properly terminating the charge. And that could be a problem because you could hold the battery at 4.2 volts indefinitely and that could cause an overcharge. So it's something that I would like to look at uh, in future. So there it is, there's the new style TP4056 single lithium cell charger board with the battery protection components. And I suppose you could say that um, the new board with an unprotected cell is the equivalent of the old board with a protected cell because the protected cell has those battery protection components inside it, so they don't need to be on the charger board. And uh, in the case of the pair at the bottom there, the protection components are on the board, so they don't have to be in the cell. So just a quick look at where this board came from, eBay, and it's uh, one of my favorite sellers, Alice, 110-1983. Um, very cheap, two boards, for £1.66, free postage, and there's Alice Womano1983. And I will put um, a link to this item. I'll do it on ebay.com because you can't actually buy it on ebay.co.uk. I'll put a link in the uh, video description.